We're so grateful and thankful and so honored to have been invited to be here at Greater Holy St. John, a church that um, is a part of the history of the Welder Street Missionary Baptist Church. I often say uh, that the very first pastor um, that reached out to me was Bishop Sorrells, amen. Um, and we're thankful for Bishop. Give Bishop Sorrell some love, if you don't mind. And to my friend, uh, Pastor Parker, amen. Uh, to my friend, uh, Pastor Palmer, amen. To my friend, Pastor Castling, come on, give them all some love, amen. Uh, to the assistant pastor, Reverend Hall, amen. Uh, that sounds good, right? Amen. Um, I'm for 16 years, uh, we've been fellowship. I know it seemed like yesterday, right? 16 years, I've been pastor of the Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. And I've always watched and admired Reverend Hall, how he takes care of his pastor. Amen. Uh, and so I'm so happy to be here to share uh, in that elevation to uh, that position here at our sister church, Greater Holy St. John. Come on, give Reverend Hall some love. See, one of the problems is we, we came by faithfulness today. And when you have somebody that's faithful, that's loving, that's caring, that goes over and beyond, we ought to appreciate that, especially the church. Amen. Uh, to Reverend um, I like to call him Reverend Willie Beeman, but Reverend Beeman, give him some love if you don't mind. Amen. Man, Reverend Beeman, he got some energy, boy. I just came in here and running up and down the aisleway. Amen. I want to say it's just an honor to be here. I won't be before you long. I have one more service uh, that I have to attend. I just didn't want to make it an issue to uh, Bishop Sorrells because... It seemed like every time around this time, I just get invited everywhere. Everybody want uh, my money. Amen. Uh, but we are so grateful, uh, again, just for the fellowship. This is a true fellowship. Amen. Come on, give Sister Parker some love. Evangelist Parker. And First Lady Surreal. Amen. So happy to see you all here. Um, and this is like true fellowship and uh, it was added when uh, these pastors here came and was uh, a part of this celebration today. So it made me a little happy. Amen. Uh, but listen, I won't be before you long. I'm so happy for uh, the minister that my church, our assistant pastor, Reverend Ireland, he weren't, he, amen, he, he's dressed down um, this morning, but it's okay. I mean, came on to church anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah anyhow. And then Minister Fair, my mother, so happy to have her. Um, she hurt her. She hurt her leg, but she she wasn't at our church anymore. But she surprised me seeing her press her way um, to this church on today, and to all the wonderful members of the Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church. Give yourselves in. I see y'all. It's always. I'm always excited to be a part of the church anniversary. As I was sitting here, uh, Reverend Island sent me a text message. He said, Pastor, what my name going to be put in the church history? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. He didn't send that. He didn't send that. But I just love the way y'all honor. I love the way y'all honor the deacons, the preachers, and Amen. Yo, amen. That's that's. I mean, come on. That's pretty good. Amen. Um, so, but I want Willow Street. Y'all don't get. I'm not adding to our history unless we build a new church or something. But listen, uh, Hebrews chapter ten. Your theme, Bishop Sorrells. Um, you know he he always put me to work, and I'm thankful for him and his love and um, the theme he selected. I said the theme he selected. All right. 
is found in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10, just find it real quick. Amen. Real quick to Hebrews chapter 10. Um, well, let's start reading with verse number 22, if you don't mind. And it reads simply, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but extorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You may be seated. I want to just talk just for a moment in the words of Bishop Sorrells, turn up for church. Turn up for church. We're living in a time where we're considered pre-pandemic. But if we was to be honest with ourselves, the church, the attendance of the church has not recovered from the pandemic. We witness empty pews all across America. We all understand the essentials of the church. We're grateful for the pastors. We're grateful for the deacons. We're grateful for the people of God. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a time where it's time for us to get back to church. Are you praying with me here today? If you look around, the masks are no longer visible. The hand sanitizer machines are no longer operating. It's time that we as believers we embrace the importance of the church. Are you praying with me here today? Yeah. It's important because when we look at our communities, the communities that we live within, the communities that we've set out to serve through ministry, they're crying for hope. They're crying for and answer and solutions to their modern day problems. And where else could people find these problems in within the church? And I stopped by here today to say that it's time for us to turn up for church. Do I have a witness here today? Well, the songwriter reminds us that I need you and you need me. We're all a part of God's family. I stopped by here today to just to remind somebody that God has need for you. He has, amen, a voice that needs to be shared to those who are lost. Because people are looking for hope in all the wrong places. And I stopped by here today to say it's time to turn up for the church. Do I have a witness here today? You see, we, we, we devalue the importance of relationships. We think that it's become more of an individual anthem. As long as, amen, I do my part. As long as I, amen, give my time. But I, I stopped by here today to say that God is requiring more from each of us. 
He's requiring us to stand up and be a witness for the church. He's requiring us to stand up and be encouraging to our brothers and sisters that we have not seen since the pandemic. The Bible tells us that, reminds us that we're better together. Do I have a witness here today? Yes, we're better together and we must embrace that notion that, amen, God can use us, amen, to do some mighty works in the community. God can use us to bring some unlost soul to him. God can use us, amen, to bring life to death situations. Do I have a witness here today? So I'll stop by here today to remind somebody that it's time to turn up. Turn up for the church. Do I have a witness here today? I try to tell people all the time that, amen, there's no greater, amen, there's no greater place than the church of God. The church is the place where God's spirit rams. The, the church is the place where God's babies are blessed. The church is the place where God's spirit dwells. We got to turn up for the church. Do I have a witness here today? The reason why so many people, amen, believe that, amen, the church is outdated is because, amen, so many individuals want to run away from their responsibilities as believers of the gospel. The Bible tells us that not only is the church affected, but you are affected. God is calling us all to a higher standard. He's calling us to be strong and mighty in such a time like this. And the only way you're going to find yourself growing is if you're in tune to the word of God. And where is the word of God being shared? Right here in the church. Do I have a witness here today? I tell people all the time we're different. We're strange. We're peculiar. Amen. God has called us for such a time like this. Hey, the world is not like us. Do I have a witness here? Only Pastor Palmer caught that one. <laughs> they ain't like us. So you got to understand who you are. You got to understand your calling. God is calling the church to come back together, together, amen, in order for us to, 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 to save this dying generation. People always talk about how things have made a change. They say, a preacher don't preach no more like they used to preach. I like to say in my part, people don't say amen no more. You talk about the preacher, you don't say amen no more. Like you used to say, amen. But God is using us for such a time like this to build us for the work ahead. See, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, it tells us how important we are to one another. We got to start valuing our relationship. That's why when I walked in the doors today, I, I saw all these great men of God. And, and amen, my heart began to get happy. Because I understand the struggles of, of many of these pastors, many of these leaders in such a time that we're living within. Yeah, yeah. My heart was happy because I was embraced with hugs. I was embraced with love. I was embraced with encouragement through these men of God. And can you imagine those of us in the church if we just get past our petty differences, if we could just get past our dislike for one another? How we will be too many of us were focusing on things that we should not be focusing on we're worrying about this and worrying about that but I stopped by here today to remind you that God is calling us to a higher standard and I want you to know he can do great things when we come together when I was a kid I used to love transformers all of them was all powerful when they was all by themselves. Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, Megatron, all was good, all by themselves. But when they came together, they became ultimate. And I, I believe uh, today, greater Holy St. John, amen, you have the leader that God has sent you.
to. But in order for us to make a difference, we got to come together. Yeah. Tell people all the time. The Bible reminds us, amen, that God gives us gifts according to his heart and according to your heart. Do I have a witness here today? I don't know why my spirit just hit me on that one. But we got to start appreciating the gift that God has given to us. Do I have a witness here today? While we're feuding and while the church is so fractured and so separated, we don't understand that's what the devil's job is to do, to kill, steal, and destroy. But the word of God reminds us, amen, that in Thessalonians, it tells us, therefore, encourage one another. We got to learn to build each other up. Bible tell us in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labors. If either fall down, we'll be there to help that brother up. Amen. Galatians 6 and 2 say, we got to learn how to bear one another burdens. So the law of Christ will be fulfilled. Proverbs 27, 17 said, iron sharpen iron. One man sharpens another's. All I'm trying to say is we're better together. Do I have a witness here today? That was my sermon. To, we're getting, I was trying to talk about some church, turn up for the church. But we're better together. And we celebrate 73 years here. God has brought you 73 years because you were better together. Did you hear the church anniversary? I said, I mean, church history. I sat there and watched it for 20 minutes, reading of how we're better together. Shot fired at my bishop. And as we look in this book of Hebrews, this passage it encourages us to understand that. It's important that we understand we got to learn how to draw near to God. Yeah. If we want our churches to grow, if we want our ministry to be effective in times like this, we got to learn how to draw near to God. Yeah. Do I have a witness here today? It tells us that God is requiring a deeper relationship. None of us have seen this before. None of us have pastored after a pandemic. None of us have, amen, have led churches after a pandemic. But we have to learn how to draw nearer to God. Why is it that we draw nearer to God? Well, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, excuse me, chapter 10, verse 19 and 20, therefore, brothers and sisters, we are confident to enter into this most holy place by the blood of Jesus. That passage emphasized that we have access to God through the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. That's why we come together every Sunday to celebrate the newness that is found through Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness here today? Our confidence comes through Christ. And so it's important in times like this that we learn how to draw closer to God. Why? Because we can do nothing without him. For on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All I'm trying to say to you today, my brothers and sisters, that we got to understand that we got to lean and depend on God in times like this. Do I have a witness here today? I know that every now and again it gets a little rough. But we got to learn how to press our way to God's house. Because the church offers grace to the guilty. The church offers, amen, love to the broken heart. Do I have a witness here today? I don't know about you, but with Christ, we have a whole lot of things in common. Do I have a witness here today? I know that every now and again, we're going to have our disagreements, but we can't hold on to the pettiness of life. For the word of God shares with us that we got to learn how to hold on to the right stuff. Do I have a witness here today? It tells us to hold on to the profession of our faith 
without wavering. Do I have a witness here today? I don't know about you today, but I thank and praise God for faith. Do I have a witness here today? We as Christians, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. For the Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Do I have a witness here today? So I say hold on to Jesus Christ and hold on to your faith. Do I have a witness here today? If you can hold on to the newness of Christ and if you can hold on to your faith, you will never forsake the assembly of the brethren. Do I have a witness here today? We need the church in times like this. Do I have a witness here today? The Bible tells us to hold on to the good deeds of the church. Do I have a witness here today? I don't know about you, but I thank God for the church. I don't know about you, but there's no greater place than the public meeting place of God's house. Do I have a witness here today? The church is not just a building, but it's a community of believers. People that look like you and me. Do I have a witness here today? We are called to worship God in spirit and truth. Do I have a witness here today? I stop by here today just to remind somebody that we must make the church a priority in times like this. Do I have a witness here today? So let us not be weary by doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we faint not. Do I have a witness here today? I stop by here today just to remind somebody that the Bible tells us in Psalms 122, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Do I have a witness here today? I stopped by here today just to remind somebody, never forget about the joy of coming to church. Do I have a witness here today? I stopped by here today just to remind somebody, press your way to God's church. I know that times get a little rough. I know that times get a little suffering. But I stopped by here just to remind somebody that God got a blessing with your name on it. Do I have a witness here today? When you think about what God's done for you, how he saved your soul, how he made ways out of no way. I don't know about you, but I shout hallelujah. Is there anybody here that's come to shout hallelujah? Is there anybody here that's come to praise God? Well, if you need a reason, let me give you a reason. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, our Jesus, he suffered blood. He died for sinners like you and me. He stayed in that grave all day Friday. He stayed in that grave all day Friday night. He stayed all day Saturday. He stayed in that grave all day Saturday night. But I'm so glad. I said I'm glad that early, somebody shout early, he got up with all powers, power to make you walk right, power to make you love right, power to make you do right. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he all of our fears are gone because he lives my life and your life is all worth the living all because he lives somebody shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah never forget
Hallelujah. Let us stand. Let us stand. 